Hey everybody, welcome to Fantasy Valley Part 6. This video is going to be a little bit more slow paced than the rest of this series because I'm trying to do something new. At least, I haven't done it before, at least not on this sense and this skill, and I haven't seen anybody else do it either. And the reason that I'm doing it is also more or less out of necessity. Basically, you might know that I'm trying to go for an Asian theme with this part of the park here. And there isn't any kind of Asian theme in the game, and there aren't too many Asian pieces in the game either. So, that's a bit of a problem. And the only way that I figured I could really get over that and save myself quite a bit of time and troubles at some point later in the future is to try and make a custom set of Asian roofs to use, since roofs are really the most dominant and like visible and recognizable parts of Asian buildings. Or at least we're talking about East Asian. Um, so this area is mostly inspired by China and Japan. And it's that kind of architecture which I want to get into this specific part. So, uh, the way that I wanted to make that set is start off with a very basic piece which all of the other pieces will be based on, which I just did, which is just very simple, a full tile roof that's slightly gentle, goes down a bit, and um, has barely any decorations on it. And from there, kind of use that as a template to make all of the other pieces that hopefully together and I didn't test that at this point, so I'm really happy that it at least worked out somewhat in the end. Um, together, all of those pieces should be able to be combined to make all sorts of different shapes and sizes and kinds of roofs that you would want to make for this style. So the second roof type that I wanted to get into is the corner roof, which is the tricky bit, since the Asian buildings are definitely uh, most famous for their like curved points of the roofs. So, I had to get that in here, and the trouble with this is not just that the roof itself uh, curves a bit, it goes from very steep on the top to very gentle on the bottom, but the curves, or like the corners of the roofs also curve upwards a bit, so there's like two different curves in here, which makes it all a bit awkward to place all of the different pieces and make sure that they're all in the right position and um, don't overlap in strange ways, because I wanted to get this looking as clean as I could. Uh, you might know that these types of roofs are actually supposed to be tiled roofs, um, which is not really the case in here, since there aren't just any tiled roof pieces which I could use to make this kind of roof with exactly in the shape and style that I wanted to. So instead, I'm using some wooden planks and wooden pillars to try and get the general look of what the tiled roofs would look like, especially with those big tubular roof tiles that go down and the horizontal smaller roof tiles that are laid in between those sort of make the same pattern with the wood, but in the end it's not exactly the same look and you can't exactly get that same texture. So in the end it is kind of going for an Asian looking roof without it actually being all that correct, so if you would zoom on, uh, zoom in on this quite a bit, you definitely notice that it's made out of wood and not a proper texture, but the goal of this was to basically make some roofs that would work to make a general Asian looking, maybe slightly fantasy-like theme. About which I also kind of have to say, uh, I didn't get too many comments about this, but I did set out to make this uh, a fantasy park with uh, real-life counterparts, which all of the different sections of the park are based on, but so far I haven't really gone into the fantasy realm that much, and um, that's something which I do want to do a bit more in the future. And I won't do extremely weird things, and we're not going to go into the fantasy realm of floating islands and things like that, but at least uh, mix different styles. Uh, just the very fact that I'm trying to put together J Japanese and Chinese architecture and sort of make it one theme in this case is already a bit strange, but we'll get into like some bigger and more impressive buildings hopefully at some point in the future. But first I really needed to get these roofs in and make sure that that's alright. Uh, so the next roof that I needed to make was um, the roof on the side because I also need quite a few gables for these kinds of roofs. So the way that I wanted to try that is quickly make that uh, thing on the side here and connect those um, beams that I just made on the side to a regular roof and get some extra decorations on top of that, which are like the big ridges that you see on top of many of these kinds of roofs. 
so I'll get in a few of these ridges as well. And the idea is that in the end, um, we'll have all sorts of different pieces. We have the corner piece, we have the straight piece, uh, we have ridge pieces, gable pieces, and steep pieces, and more gentle pieces, so that you can combine them all and um, basically make any kind of roof shape out of it. And the final piece, I think, no, this is almost the final piece, but it is a very important piece, is the top of the roof, which is used for some larger roofs and to get a bit more of a steep angle in there. So this one is just straight and supposed to be used with the already curved roofs to make them a bit higher. And this one also has that big ridge on top of that as uh, the decoration. Now these roofs I think are actually the very last roofs and the biggest ones that I needed for any kind of large gable. And one little annoying thing about this is that I had to make two different roofs for each side for this kind of thing since they have the decorations on top of it and I um, wanted to keep it quite modular. Um, but this actually caused some issues later on because what I didn't talk about yet but what I did off screen and you won't see me doing that much is recolor all of these roofs so that we have different uh, colors of roofs as well to work with. Uh, the only problem with that was that all this time I figured I could just select everything and uh, give that one color at once but turns out I actually have to select every kind of object at a time so that took a lot of time to do. So skipping forward a little bit to the actual building process, at this point I finished the sets and uh, I've got a couple of different colors. We've got the green roof that I'm well starting out with here, uh, we've got the golden roof which supposedly is only used for castles or palaces and like prestigious buildings in China but we're just gonna well use it for pretty much anything here. Uh, I've got some black roofs that could fit in with the roofs of the pagoda which by the way, I didn't want to go with the roofs of the pagoda here since they are smaller and not supposed to be used on full tiles. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I've also got some red roofs, I believe, and that should be it for all of the different colors that I have. And that should be just about enough to get a good variety of colors in all of these buildings. Now, what I wanted to do first with these roofs is make some buildings on the side of the rocky mountain here. The plan was always to kind of have a bunch of facades here at the back of the coaster to not just mask the mountain and uh, the not so great uh, fake rockwork behind it, but also just make this um, a bit more of a town-like scene and help the pagoda look a little bit larger than it is because all of these buildings are gonna stay quite low and um, just kind of be a bit of an addition to make the rest of this area look a bit better instead of uh, drawing too much attention to themselves. But still, this was a lot of fun to uh, mess around with and see what you can actually do with the theme. Uh, so the first building is just super simple, or at least the way that it's set up, basically just the gable on the front of it, uh, three floors um, with a roof on the bottom floor and a balcony on the second floor, or the first floor, I should, no that's the second floor, yep. Um, and that is really the basic shape and I'll attach a few other smaller facades on the right of this one, but this is more or less going to be the biggest building of this view here. And it's also the first to be adding a bit more of a Chinese touch to this area. Obviously the green roofs I wanted to get in here just to get some different colors. Almost everything up to this point has been red or orange so there's a lot of those same colors around here. But in general this uh, really feels like a more Chinese building. I'm not that much into Chinese buildings but there is not a very large build, uh, difference between Japanese and Chinese, but some of the big differences is that Chinese buildings rarely paint the outsides. Uh, so Chinese buildings often have a lot of painted woodwork and a lot of very different lush colors, whereas Japanese buildings usually just keep the same old uh, boring grey brownish color of the woodwork and don't paint their stuff as much. So Chinese buildings are usually much more colorful and with that hopefully we should be able to get some more color into this area and the most well the only probably in the end really Japanese building in this area is going to stay the pagoda which should hopefully still blend in quite a bit with the more Chinese building since it is quite a colorful pagoda but I probably shouldn't think about that stuff so much and I'm trying to do it less since really the fantasy idea behind this park is to Stop worrying so much about making things look entirely realistic and just go off the plan for a bit here and there. 
and um, just do some more fun, playful things. Also, it's just kind of like a theme park, and architecture architecture in a theme park isn't always exactly realistic or conform to the standards of whatever they're trying to go for, but just whatever looks good is gonna work. And I guess that's what I'm hopefully gonna go for with this fantasy theme as well. Just go beyond what the theme should be and do some fun stuff every now and then. Uh, now, another thing that I had to do um, is actually get some path work in, which I struggled with for quite a bit, but in the end I'm quite happy with it. Um, the path work isn't going to be strictly the path work that is actually functional and in-game, because it's really hard to get that type of path to lead everywhere, in a sense that theme park paths go. I think the path system in the game is good, the only problem with it is still and I know I've complained about this for quite a bit, um, but it, the problem with it still is that it's not very theme park-ish. At least, it isn't easy to get that in. Theme parks are often very large stretches of concrete, very wide and winding paths, and this kind of path system is much better for narrow paths that just kind of snake through an area, which is not what I'm trying to do here, so most of these paths, something to keep in mind, are um, made to have different sidewalks that are just made out of scenery and not actual paths beside them. And this entire area down here at the base of these buildings is going to be almost entirely path with just a few planters and open spaces for some trees in between. Um, but there's going to be quite some large stretches of concrete in here. Uh, so that's the idea to keep in mind for this whole area. Uh, the windows actually are one of the easier things of making Asian buildings in this case, since many either just have these very large open uh, windows kind of um, panels or just paper panels which is quite easy to get in but I do want to experiment a bit more in the future with different pieces to make them since it might start looking very boring if I keep using the same windows everywhere. But for now these ones will just work for pretty much all of the buildings that we have in here. Just connecting the stairway to the pagoda very quickly. This is also not going to be functional since there's just no way that I could actually get a path in game to go precisely where I want that staircase to go but I guess in a fantasy way if this would be a real park it would be amazing to well at least walk over to the pagoda and be able to take that small path over the bridge and check that out there which would be the idea here. It's just not going to be able to happen in a uh, game functional way. Now with this fence, I'm just closing off the river for a bit. I got a few comments actually about this, uh, asking if I would actually add water to the lower part of the river at the other side of the bridge here, which doesn't have any water yet. I'll certainly do so at some point in the future, um, but not quite yet. It's just that to get those waterfalls in there, especially since it's a very gentle slope, I would have to... Um, well, I have a lot of trial and error with the precise placement of the water VFX, which takes a lot of time and a lot of pausing and unpausing the game, and I actually love being on just about, well, 10am on this part of the park, since that would mean that the sun is coming on, well, almost directly onto the rocky mountain here, which is just about the best angle of light to work on. Maybe I care about that a little bit too much, but bottom line is, we'll get in a waterfall at some point in the future over there. It's just not happening quite yet. It might actually happen in the next episode, in which I'll do a lot of gardening around this area, but I'm not entirely supposed to spoil the next episode already. Um, so yeah, last building of this very small part of the facade here, um, which I'll be working on in this video is just a quick building which I had a bit of trouble with figuring out what I wanted to do for a bit. This was pretty much just improvised and kind of hoping that I would figure out stuff along the way and in the end I decided to leave out that top part since this is a very narrow stretch of land and it would either clash with the lift hill or with the, um, with the flying coaster on the other side. So in the end, it's just a very narrow and not even that tall part of the facade here. Just to make sure that I at least have the mountain covered up, but have a building that just fits into the space. And that is quite simple as well. Now actually a couple of other things that I want to talk about, just because I had a few comments about them. And I at least want to get that out there and talk about all of the feedback that I got and that I actually put into the park as well. The layout of the coaster, especially around this turn in here, 
isn't really that good and I have to say flying coasters aren't really one of my strong points and um, in hindsight there are just some things about this layout that are not really up to standards for a flying coaster or just outright bad and one of those points is actually the curve right here which would be pretty forceful when you're lying on your back right here um, and I'm not too sure if I'm gonna keep it in. It's not too bad though, the only thing is that it's gonna have to be stretched out a bit more. So this will be lowered a bit. Right now the track is very close to the buildings here, um, but it will be lowered and that curve will be sort of stretched out um, to have the track go a little bit further away from the buildings, but also have that curve be a bit larger so it's less forceful. And another point which I will change in the next episode at the end of it, um, is going to be the Immelman at the beginning of the coaster where you have that half loop and a twist after that to go back to a flying position. Uh, that's going to be removed and instead we're going to have a twist right at the drop and have the half loop after that as a sort of half pretzel loop. Basically what's going to happen is that the loop is going to be reversed. Right now it's kind of like an inverted loop and it's going to be a regular one almost because at the moment it would launch you into the harness of the coaster really forcefully and um, reversing that to kind of make it a half pretzel like many flying coasters would have seems like a bit of a better option layout wise. And another point is the rock work behind these buildings. Um, I am well pretty well aware that it's not the best idea to be making that rock work out of literal rock work as a scenery object from the game instead of just terraforming which would save lots of time or at the very least it would save a lot of polies in the game and maybe make it look a bit better. The thing is just, I've tried to get some sedimentary rock layers and realistic rock facades out of the in-game terraforming tool but I just failed and whether that's just me, I'm not that good with the terraforming tool. Pretty bad actually, really bad. Um, or whether that's just the fact that it's not possible because I haven't really figured out any texture that you could really make to get some sedimentary rock layers or rock shapes in the rock work. Um, basically, it doesn't work out so I've chosen to go with regular rocks, which also kind of helps to make it look a bit more theme parkish. because the idea with the rocks is definitely not to make a realistic mountain or make a realistic cliffside, uh, but just make one that looks like it's a theme park and like it's actually out of poured concrete or whatever the theme park chose to make it out of. So it's in a way supposed to look like a fake mountain, that's the idea at least. But I will work on the rock work and the coaster layout a bit more in the future and refine them pretty much whatever comes up and um, if there are ways to make things better, I'm always happy to get some comments about it because I definitely can't do everything right on my own. Um, but yeah, that is just about everything I wanted to say about that. Back to the time lapse, I just finished the building off pretty quickly there. I wanted to change a couple of things last minute just because the windows are looking super similar at this point and I will want to at least have some bigger differences and variety in wall textures in the future. Uh, but the last part that I wanted to do still in this video is the beginnings of the plaza in front of it. Most of this will be made in the next episode but I wanted to get a small start, get an idea of what it's going to look like still in this video. Basically what we're gonna have is a um, two heights of the plaza so in the middle of it we'll have a bit of planter action with some trees and bushes and uh, both sides are gonna have pretty wide paths with sidewalks and right in the middle of that we're gonna have this staircase which leads up or uh, leads down basically connects them and um, pretty much cuts straight through what is going to be the planter area at some point in the future and it's also a good way to get in some different fences, which I want to try and get as much variety in as I can as well. Last but not least, we have some finishing touches, a couple of extra paths on the side of the real paths, a bit of rock work to kind of blend everything together, and a tiny bit of foliage as well. And that's it for this episode's time lapse. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.